Evander Kane has yet to play in a game this season, but the troubled NHL star is nevertheless once again under investigation by the league. If it feels like Kane is always under investigation by the NHL, it's because he has been for the better part of the last six months. But we should see a major breakthrough in this saga soon. The NHL is reportedly close to wrapping up its probe into allegations Kane crossed the US-Canada border last month while still in pandemic protocol. Will the 30-year-old be suspended for the second time this season? And if so, for how long? The answers to these questions could have major ramifications because Kane's a rare commodity, a marquee player available at mid-season following the termination of his contract with the San Jose Sharks. Heck, the power forward might even sign with a club later this week. Yeah, there's plenty to discuss here. So sit back, relax, and take this in. Kane's recent string of troubles began in July when his estranged wife, Anna, posted some stunning claims to Instagram, alleging Kane not only had a gambling addiction, but was also wagering on his own hockey games and throwing them in the process. Kane confirmed in an interview with ESPN that he did have a gambling addiction, although he vehemently denied the rest. The NHL investigated it and ultimately found no evidence that Kane had been gambling on his games. In the same September press release, the league announced it was in the middle of a second investigation into Kane for additional unrelated allegations. These were sexual assault and domestic battery allegations made by Anna in a restraining order application that was part of the couple's divorce filings. Kane denied these allegations too. In October, the NHL said it could not substantiate Anna's domestic abuse claims. However, in the same press release, the league announced Kane would be suspended without pay for the first 21 games of the 2021 season. The reason? Kane had violated the NHL's pandemic protocol by reportedly submitting a fake vaccination card. The bombshell ruling came on the reports that A, the Sharks had tried to trade Kane in the offseason, and B, some of Kane's teammates didn't want him to return to the team. One unnamed source told The Athletic that Kane's disrespect for team rules, i.e. being late for practices and games, had caused friction within the Sharks' bubble. When Kane's suspension ended in November, the team placed him on waivers. He cleared and appeared in five games for the Sharks' AHL affiliate, recording eight points. Then on December 21st, he tested positive. Protocol calls for 10 days of isolation, but on December 29th, eight days after entering protocol, Kane allegedly flew to Vancouver, his hometown. The Sharks placed Kane on waivers again, this time for the purpose of terminating the remainder of the seven-year, $49 million contract he signed with the Sharks back in 2018. The NHL Players Association has since filed a grievance on Kane's behalf, saying the Sharks didn't have cause to cancel his deal and avoid paying him the outstanding $22 million. All of the drama over the past six months has been underlined by a checkered past. In January 2021, Kane filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy after amassing a debt of $26.8 million, including $1.5 million related to gambling. The Cosmopolitan Casino in Vegas sued Kane in 2019, claiming he had walked out on $500,000 in gambling markers. In 2016, Kane was suspended by the Buffalo Sabres after missing practice to attend NBA All-Star Weekend. In the same year, he was sued for allegedly attacking a woman in a local bar and in a separate incident at another bar was arrested for harassment. That said, Kane was eventually cleared of wrongdoings in the two incidents in Buffalo bars. In 2015, Kane refused to play in a game for the Winnipeg Jets after getting into an altercation with his teammates earlier in the day. Dustin Bufflin, the captain of the Jets, apparently tossed Kane's tracksuit into the shower to send a message to his teammate. We could get into every single incident in Kane's career, but I think you get the point. Back to the present. Kane is a free agent who could theoretically give a contending team a tangible boost up front. The two-time 30 goal scorer is physically imposing at six foot two, 210 pounds. He can slot into a wing spot in the top six, and in the past, he's found chemistry with elite players and consistently rock strong underlying numbers. Perhaps most appealing, Kane would be a cheap ad. With teams up against the salary cap and Kane's reputation in tatters, he'll likely sign for around $1 million prorated. There is, however, an ethical debate to be had here about why NHL teams seem to be so willing to look past Kane's off-ice transgressions, but the fact of the matter is some teams are interested in signing Kane for the rest of the season. Edmonton Oilers general manager Ken Holland has admitted as much, confirming his interest last week while saying that he believes in second chances. 
which is a generous way to contextualize the situation considering Kane would be on what, like his fifth chance? Anyway, other potential fits include the Florida Panthers and Carolina Hurricanes, two legit Stanley Cup contenders who play in smaller markets. Hovering over the speculation, however, are two variables. First, the length of the second suspension, if there is one at all. If Kane is suspended for say, let's say 40 games, and there's only 45 games left in the regular season, the number of suitors may dwindle down to zero. The second variable is the risk tolerance of teams interested. If you're interested in Kane, you're actually a contender, presumably with a strong culture. You run the risk of disrupting that culture by parachuting Kane into the mix. But what do you think? Is Kane worth the risk for a cup contender in need of an offensive boost, or is he too big of a liability at this point? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. As always, we appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you next time.